Seven cases dealing with assault weapon and magazine bans have now been relisted and redistributed to the Supreme Court for review at conference. So let's talk about what is now happening in these critical rifle ban cases. Now, real quick before we jump into this video, if you think it's time for the Supreme Court to strike down rifle and magazine bans, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank one of the main supporters of this channel, which is First Form. First Form is an amazing company. I use their supplements every single day. I use their protein powder, their creatine, their pre-workout. But one of the really amazing things about First Form is that they are strong believers in freedom, in the Second Amendment, and just in American values. So again, if you want amazing supplements and you want to support a company that is pro-freedom, check out First Form. I will leave a link to them down below. And thank you again to First Form for sponsoring and supporting this content. As I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be talking about how seven cases have now been sent to the Supreme Court for consideration at conference and how they have now been rescheduled for the second time and will be reevaluated once again. Many people have questions about what is going on with these critical rifle magazine ban cases with them being rescheduled for conference. So we need to talk about what is now happening. Now, all these cases that we're going to be focusing on, they're all six out of Illinois and they are you know, seeking Supreme Court immediate review of what is going on in Illinois with PICA or the Protect Illinois Communities Act. Uh, and that is the state's new law, which bans the purchase and new acquisition of rifles and magazines. These cases include the NAGR versus Naperville case, the Harrell versus Raul case, the Barnett versus Raul case, the Gun Owners of America versus Raul case, the Langley versus Kelly case, and then also a Herrera versus Raul. These cases have been submitted to the Supreme Court. They were sent to conference, and once again, they have been rescheduled. Many of you have been asking what is going on and what this means, and what is currently happening could actually have huge implications and maybe be a sign that rifle magazine ban cases will be considered or will be impacted by upcoming Supreme Court decisions. Now, like I mentioned, there are multiple cases coming out of the state of Illinois challenging the state's ban on rifles and magazines. One of these cases is the Harrell versus Raul case, which is supported by the Second Amendment Foundation and then also Farms Policy Coalition. Harrell is a case that we've talked about before on this channel. We've talked about all these cases, but I'm just going to focus on one case to kind of outline more directly what has happened in some of these cases. Harrell was one of the multiple cases that was recently denied Seventh Circuit en banc review, even after a three-judge panel in the Seventh Circuit applied the incorrect Second Amendment analysis. This case started out in a lower court in front of Judge McGlynn, who ultimately struck down the Illinois ban on a preliminary injunction. So he issued a preliminary injunction against the enforcement of PICA. The state of Illinois then appealed that injunction up to the Seventh Circuit in a review of a three-judge panel. And it was a three-judge panel of probably the most anti-gun individuals you know, that you could have got, most anti-gun judges. Ultimately, they removed that preliminary injunction of Judge McGlynn. Now, when coming to their decision, the Seventh Circuit three-judge panel used an analysis that did not align with Heller's common use test or the recent Supreme Court ruling in Bruin. Instead, this three-judge panel in the Seventh Circuit concluded that the arms protected by the Second Amendment do not include weapons that may be reserved for military use. So they used something known as the military use test, which does not align with the Supreme Court's precedent in Heller or Bruin. This is the same test that was recently used by the Fourth Circuit in a different case, Bianchi versus Frosch, and that is a challenge to Maryland's ban on some rifles as well. Uh, again, they use a similar test, and right now we are waiting for a decision by the Fourth Circuit en banc panel. That case also went to Supreme Court, but recently was denied review. Now, in the Harrell case, the question presented to the Supreme Court was simply whether the Constitution allows the government to prohibit law-abiding, responsible citizens from protecting themselves, their families, and their homes with semi-automatic firearms and magazines that are in common use for lawful purposes. In the response, the state of Illinois argued that the Seventh Circuit was the first circuit court to consider a Second Amendment challenge to a restriction on semi-automatic firearms or ammunition magazines after New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. And the only other circuit court to consider such a challenge after Bruin held like the Seventh Circuit that the challengers were not entitled to a preliminary injunction. There is thus no conflict among the federal courts of appeal on the question presented. So one of the main arguments being made by the state of Illinois is that the Seventh Circuit is one of the only circuit courts to actually try and apply Bruin to a rifle magazine ban case. And even though they maybe got the analysis completely wrong, the Supreme Court should simply wait on this issue, wait for it to develop more in the Seventh Circuit and, and other circuit courts before they decide to get involved in this issue. They then go on to state that petitioners seek to overcome that fact that the case is not cert worthy by arguing that the lower courts 
are disrespecting Bruin and the Second Amendment, but there is no reason for the court to depart from its usual certiorari criteria. It has been less than two years since Bruin, and courts are applying it carefully to laws restricting semi-automatic weapons and ammunition magazines, many of which have been on the books for decades. And as the decision below demonstrates, they are doing so in a manner consistent with DC versus Heller and Bruin. Indeed, as the Seventh Circuit explained, the restricted firearms and magazines are not arms protected by the plain text of the Second Amendment. Rather, at least on the record developed at the preliminary injunction stage, they are more likely machine guns and military-grade weaponry that Heller stated may be banned. They go on to say that in addition, the Seventh Circuit found the challenge laws are consistent with the nation's historical tradition of regulating firearms. Specifically, to protect public safety, there is historical tradition of regulating the especially dangerous weapons of the time in the civilian population and reserving them as appropriate to the military and law enforcement while leaving many other weapons universally available for lawful self-defense. So those were the statements made by the state of Illinois to the Supreme Court on why they should reject review of this case. Now, all of this is pretty much a very bold strategy being taken by the state of Illinois. Instead of relying just on historical approaches and trying to draw a connection between maybe banning AR-15s and other historical dangerous and unusual restrictions, the state takes an even bolder approach. They first start from the premise that AR-15s and similar rifles are not arms at all. Also in this response, the state of Illinois points out in their belief that these types of items, these Air 15s and similar semi-automatic rifles are just simply M16s or just so identically similar or maybe just similar in nature to M16s. And therefore some of the language in Heller says that they can outright ban them if they want. And despite all that, they then conclude also by arguing that all these determinations by the Seventh Circuit were based on limited evidence that were developed at the preliminary injunction stage. And they argued to the Supreme Court that even if the Seventh Circuit got this analysis wrong, the Supreme Court should not get involved at this time, but instead they should let the lower court build the merits record and let them just kind of develop this case before intervening, essentially get to a merits decision and then do a whole evidentiary finding based on military use and all these other types of analysis that the Seventh Circuit wanted. FBC and SAF are trying to overcome that hurdle by arguing that even though these cases are still at a preliminary injunction posture, even though they're interlocutory reviews, you know, the Supreme Court should get involved now because waiting for the lower court to issue a merits decision based on the Seventh Circuit's analysis is essentially pointless. The Seventh Circuit's military use test is clearly incorrect. It did not follow Heller. It did not follow Bruin. The Seventh Circuit is coming up with their own analysis. They're defying what the Supreme Court said. They're not following the Second Amendment and essentially letting the lower court build evidence in a record and reach a final marriage decision based on the analysis is essentially pointless. Now, after these petitions were filed, the cases were then sent to conference a couple weeks back. During the same conference, the Bianchi Maryland rifle ban case was also seen by the Supreme Court. Now, the following week after that, we received an order and the order list of the Supreme Court actually denied the review to Bianchi. So Bianchi was denied review. And now we're going to wait for the Fourth Circuit en banc panel to issue a decision in that case. However, all the Illinois cases were not on that order list. They were not denied review. And instead, they were rescheduled for a new conference, which happened last week. And then we're waiting to see what happened this week. And on this week's order list, again, the Illinois cases were not either granted, denied or anything like that. It appears that the Illinois cases will once again be rescheduled or they will probably be put on hold. Now, with this all happening, this is in some ways positive. You know, oftentimes cases are rescheduled. Maybe they go to multiple conferences. But the interesting thing with this is that usually when cases are rescheduled, that means, you know, especially multiple times, that means that something very positive could be developing. This could signal that some of the justices are taking more time to review this issue or even more time to write a dissent if they're going to be denied. Now, again, this is very interesting, but one of the other things that could be developing, you know, especially since Bianchi was denied review, and if they were just going to deny review in these cases, they would just outright did that with the Bianchi case. But one of the interesting options could be that the Supreme Court is going to hold all the Illinois cases until they issue their decision in Rahimi. We are currently set to have a Rahimi decision issued in the next couple months, you know, before the end of this term. And again, that could have huge implications for all two-way cases. If these Illinois cases are being held for that Rahimi decision, that means that there is something possibly huge that's in that decision and maybe some big language that will impact a ton of other two-way cases, especially if it's going to impact rifle and magazine ban cases. So 
Again, very interesting to see how this is going to develop going forward. It seems like these are going to be rescheduled for conference this week, and then we'll see what happens in the order list, if they're going to be rescheduled again. If we see this kind of holding pattern of reschedule after reschedule, or maybe nothing else developing where there's no decision, that means they're on hold. And that means that maybe they're holding these cases for a Rahimi decision. So again, something we're going to be watching very closely going forward. If anything else develops, I will let you guys know. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.